Okay, so for the final video, uh, I've decided to combine two of the topics. The um, I was going to cover the two-dimensional probes and the flow lines. Um, I was going to do those in separate videos, but they kind of relate to each other. So I'm going to combine them into one video, starting with uh, flow. So to go to flow, we just click on the flow tab. And of course, once again, we have to load our data. Again, I will import data into current se session, or if ARW, go to my documents, data, group, data set. As we're seen, and edit visualizer features to once again stretch the z-axis out to 25, a factor of 25. So here's our domain once again. I'll zoom in a little bit. And like with the other renderers, to enable uh, our target renderer, we just click the checkbox next to instance uh, one. And here is our very first uh, rendering of flow. And it doesn't really look like flow. Um, but that's because we're not feeding vapor the correct variables to create the, the flow lines that we want to see. So to give it the right variables, we have to go over here on the left side of the panel and uh, click on our steady field variables. Instead of elevation, I'm going to map the u wind vector, the v wind vector, and the w wind vector as our x, y, and z components for flow. That's looking a little bit more like flow lines, but it's a little bit jagged. To fix that, I'm going to scroll down to the very bottom under these appearance settings. And here we can pick line smoothness and the flow length and crank them up at the uh, risk of overloading the computer that we're on. So one thing we always want to keep in mind is the performance of vapor uh, running on the hardware at hand. So if you're um, using some dated hardware, uh, older video cards, that kind of thing, these renderings will take a lot longer um, depending on the settings uh, that you're feeding to the different renderers. So line smoothness, the smoother you make your lines, the longer it's going to take to render. So um, if you're on a supercomputer, go hog wild and uh, well, you can still uh, make the supercomputer crawl if you're really uh, persistent about it. But um, for slower machines, you want to, I guess, balance your usage of the smoothness and the flow length. Right now, I'm going to crank both of them up a little bit. And so the flow length just increased, and the lines are a little bit smoother. Um, to get a better idea of what's going on, though, we can apply a color um, to the flow here under color slash opacity mapped entity. And um, I guess, let's see, I'm going to pick position on flow because that shows us where the flow starts and where it ends. In the transfer function, you can see this value 0 over here, where, this, where the flow starts is represented by red, and it transitions through the rainbow until we get to the value of 1 at the end with violet. So that gives us a pretty good idea of um, where things start and where things end. Another thing I can do if I scroll back up, is I can open up the show flow seeding settings, which controls um, where the seeds are placed and how many of them there are. Right now, I can see under my seed count here that I have 10 seeds. I'm going to crank that up to 100 at the risk of slowing my computer down too much. Let's see what happens and see how long this takes. And wow, it's kind of a mess, but can kind of get an idea of where the flow is going around in the hurricane. If there's a specific region that we're interested in, uh, if we don't care so much about the stuff on the outside, we can go over here into our navigation mode and pick our flow rake, which kind of determines where these flow points are being randomly selected in our, uh, our full domain. I can take this down and kind of squish it in towards the eye and each time this will take a while to uh, re-render. So, let me see if I can bring all these in without taking too long. And the closer that we uh, 
squeeze the flow lines in, the more, uh, I guess, uniform the, uh, the flow lines are <laughs> concentrated around the eye of the hurricane. I'm not sure if that's clearer or more obscure than I had it before, but I think you get the idea. You can squeeze in where the seeds are randomly distributed into a certain region that you can pick uh, with the mode manipulator. So that's basically how to apply flow, um, designate it to a certain area, color it, and control how many seeds you have. But there's another way to edit the flow renderer, <clears throat> and that's to pick individual isolated spots within the volume that you'd like to plant a flow seed and see what happens at that specific point. And to do that, we need to use uh, the probe, which gives us a 2D slice within our volume. And uh, from that slice, we can pick out isolated spots where we'd like to plant a seed and kind of see how you know, a feather would flow from that point in the domain. So I'm going to um, go over here into my flow seeding settings. And for this flow renderer, instead of applying a random rake, which is a random distribution in this red domain box, I'm going to pick a list of seeds. Now we haven't defined any yet, so Vapor is going to let us know that there's nothing there and give us an error message, but we just ignore it. Click OK. I'm going to go up here to my navigation mode so we don't have to see that red box anymore. And now I'm going to go over two renderers to my probe. So now that I'm uh, over in my probe tab, I'm going to go over here and just like any other uh, renderer, I'm going to enable the probe renderer by clicking on this checkbox. And here we have the first uh, glimpse of our 2D slice uh, within our volume. Uh, like with all the other renderers, it's showing elevation as its default. So instead, I'm going to pick uh, the U wind component to look at so we can kind of look at the eye of the hurricane. And um, what I'd also like to do is take this probe and reorient it so we can kind of look at a cross uh, view of the eye and see the wind kind of coming towards us and pushing away from us. So to rotate the probe, I'm going to select uh, the Show Probe Layout Options button. I'm going to scroll down here, and here's all the different ways that we can assign uh, parameters to the way our probe looks. Um, but for my case, I'm just going to go down here to my uh, Orientation Angles fields, and I'm going to do a 90 degree rotation with this button here. I'm going to do it on my x-axis, and then I'm going to fit it to my domain stretch it out so it covers end to end. After that, I'm going to scroll down and look at my transfer function down here at the bottom. I'm going to fit my data, so I'm looking at the entire uh, range in U. I'm going to fit that uh, range to the view in my transfer function, and then I'm going to rebuild my histogram. Uh, so there's my U variable, and I'm going to bring down the colors to apply to the most prevalent values inside. So, fit that to view, and we can see how, or click the histogram again, and we can see how the colors are being applied in this slice to the U uh, wind vector. So, you can kind of see the eye wall here in the center. Um, let's see, our values around zero where the wind is slowest are colored blue. You can see on my mouse cursor right there. High values are in purple around 15 meters per second and the very low values uh, around negative 32 meters per second are in red. So what I want to do is I want to apply my flow seeds in specific areas of interest. Um, I'm not sure what those areas of interest are right now but I guess we can find out as we go along. I'm going to scroll up and to begin planting my flow seeds, I'm going to go to this cross-section view over here on the right side of my screen. Here is a little crosshair, and what I can do with that crosshair is I can pick a point on the probe, and if we go up into our navigation mode up here, and we click on uh, the probe view, 
we can actually see where the crosshair is in our 3D rendering. Um, I'm going to ignore that for now because I think the cross-sectional view on the left is sufficient to know where we're putting our seed. So where that cross-sectional hair is, or crosshair is, I'm going to add point to flow seeds. And, oops, it looks like my flow settings are wrong. That looks like the flow that we saw earlier. So my steady field got reset. I'm going to reset this to U, V, and W. And now we see the wind flow coming out from that point in our probe. And let me see. I must have deleted my instance and made a new one. So I'm going to go down here and increase my line smoothness once again. And the flow length. Then apply position on flow as my coloring factor. Going back over here to my probe tab, I'm going to pick a few more points to add uh, seeds to. Mostly in these red areas. I'm going to just litter these uh, very, I guess, negative wind values with uh, more and more flow seeds. That's not clear in the green. And just for good measure, why not get some up here in the purple area up in the top left? So basically, there you have it. That's um, how you identify uh, certain regions of interest in your study area and apply flow seeds to specific places. Um, along with uh, distributing a random field of flow seeds as well. Uh, I hope you've all enjoyed the uh, tutorial sessions I've put together, and we do plan on, on doing more. There are other um, renderers that we can go through, as well as topics like uh, data conversion, um, building movies or animation sequences, uh, keyframing those animation sequences so you can actually fly through your uh, volume and look at um, areas of interest, kind of like if you were in a movie panning around the scene. And uh, gosh, data converters, there's a lot to cover. So hopefully we'll be able to expand on these videos in the future. And uh, thank you for watching.